Commence primary ignition. Hey there, friends, fans, and collectors. Welcome to another episode of Binary Sunset Review. Today we are taking a look at the second wave of Walmart vintage collection Lucasfilm 50th releases. Now this included the Tusken Raider, the Death Star droid, and Luke from Endor. Really excited to take a look at these guys, especially getting some original 96 reprints. That being the Tusken Raider definitely and the droid I believe. But let's take a look at this Tusken. They're sand people alright, I can see one of them now. <laughs> Before I begin, I want to remind everyone to hit the subscribe button below. Get that ready. way you'll stay on the forefront of the best Star Wars news and reviews as soon as I make them. Here we have a great look at the front of the boxing for our Tusken Raider. As we can see, we have the double piping with the silver logo in the middle that comes with our A New Hope figures. We have the Saga logo up right next to the title there. And they're using one of my favorite colors for backgrounding for the pill and for the character ever. I love this lime green. It really does accentuate the figure and really, really is eye-catching for the whole packaging. We have an excellent image of the Tusken Raider attacking Luke there, mid-swing of his gothy stick. It's a really memorable image and I appreciate so much that they chose that to be the card back. We have the Kenner logo down there on the bottom and this is part of the Walmart exclusive Lucasfilm 50th Finish Collection launches, so we get that logo in the top corner on the left. Flipping around, we get the nice timeline of the Lucasfilm 50th, which is just all of Star Wars and cinema on a timeline there. It's a nice display they're doing for this anniversary year. We have the other three figures who are also seen here that come in this Walmart exclusive set of three. That is the Death Star droid, the Tusken Raider, and Luke Skywalker. These are included in this year's vintage collection lineup, so they are numbered even though they are exclusives. These numbers go from 197, which is the Death Star droid, all the way up to 199, which is the Tusken Raider. Aside from that, the rest is legalese, but let's get this guy out of his package. Here we have a first look at our Tusken Raider out of the box. I really have to say that first impressions, I'll go over this deeper into the articulation, but we are missing some of the advancements that we see for newer vintage collection figures, especially for like the more humanoid models that we like to pose a little bit more articulated. It's really exciting to have a Tusken Raider in the vintage collection again. I, I believe this was an original 96 figure. Please let me know below in the comments if he was or if he was not. But it's great to see him on the a New Hope card back there, the original Star Wars card back, and with the New Hope image, and just such a really just iconic Star Wars character as the Tusken Raider. We've seen them in so many movies uh, across so many different stories, and it's just really fabulous to have another version of him in the vintage collection, finally. Other first impressions have to be the soft goods cape and the accessories he comes with. He really does come with the whole arsenal of the Tusken Raider, and the soft goods outside really do distinguish this as a vintage collection figure and makes them so much, so much better in the end. Now, I was gonna wait to do deeper delve into the articulation, but while I was posing him with his rifle in his hand, his hand popped right off. So, I mean, aside from the poor articulation, these really do feel kind of shoddily made this bit. I mean, it, I have never broken a vintage collection figure, and I am quite delicate with these pieces, and for God's sakes, Hasbro, we are treated to some pretty advanced painting and detailing here. The soft goods really do come out. I'm going to take the cape off later so we can see. Now the painting and the detailing really is pretty standard with the vintage collection. It's why we appreciate these figures so much. It's also how Hasbro has justified their price increase consistently. But you know, I really just had hoped that the, the craftsmanship would go a little higher into the creation of the figures, the plastic and the actual models of the figures as well as the painting and the detailing, because, man, these things are getting flimsier and flimsier. So going into the articulation, as you can see, I have a Luke Skywalker-handed Tuscan now. Um, I am really not going to go very deep into forcing these joints, because this figure is ridiculously stiff-jointed, so, so stiff-jointed that I have accidentally torn off a hand, ripped it right from the peg here, it's, it's a damn shame, you know, I will be able to repair this with some glue, but certainly won't have the articulation that it originally had. But going into it, as I had mentioned before, there are no bendable wrists, he does not have rocker angles, 
the joints are as stiff as concrete, and I really just don't know what they were thinking. If this was the original design, then I'll give it to them, but if this was a newly designed Tuscan figure, it really is lacking. Uh, we have some bunched up kind of hard plastic that's supposed to resemble the, the robe on his elbows. It makes for this really, really weird looking elbow. Now, you're gonna have the soft goods cape, which does come off, which is nice. Um, hiding these joints mostly, but it really, really does take away from some of the articulation. Now, he does have joints in the arms, and the joints do go all the way up, so he is able to tee. But as I said before, these are some very, very stiff joints that I, I really have to force, and I don't want to. Um, that being said, also, the head, when I spun it, almost popped right off. It was stiff as concrete. Uh, really, really not going to get much articulation out of this guy, and I'm not going to try and force it. We do have knee joints, we do have ankle joints, but, you know, without the rocker ankles, that doesn't really give us a lot of motion. Um, so he's just going to stand here and look pretty great. Um, and luckily with his soft goods cape, he really does look great. But again, I really wish that we had some more accessibility and more posability for these figures as we see and as we expect from some of the newer vintage collection figures. Here we get a nice breakdown, the accessories that come with our Tuscan Raider. Now he does come with the soft goods robe, which I didn't remove, but can be removed. He comes with his famous gappy stick, as well as the Tuscan Raider canister rifle. These are greatly painted accessories, really nice detail. This really does round the figure off nicely, where we get a lot of the accessories they're seen with on screen. All right, now let's talk pros and cons for this vintage collection Tuscan Raider figure. I have to say that we keep consistently with these Walmart exclusives, not only finding them to be hard to find on the shelves, tough to grab in the pre-orders, but even once you do as a collector get your hands on them, the quality of the card backs is abysmal. I chose some of the best card backs that I was delivered, but if I were to do close-ups on the horizontal and verticals of these cards, they're, they're wonkier than, than trading cards you've been playing with for 10 years. And it is, it is really, really sad because the Vintage Collection is known for its quality of figures, quality of art, but really collectors buy it for the packaging. I mean, this packaging is so iconic, it's so beautiful, it, it, and it's such a shame, when especially when these exclusives, who were hard to get in the first place, arrive to us damaged or just not in anywhere near a pristine condition. Believe it or not, a lot of them, even the most coveted exclusives like the Mandalorian and Grogu, came to us in bags. Now, how is a card supposed to be maintain its integrity in a bag? Which, as a pro tip, which is why I also sometimes get two, because when you get two, sometimes they put both of them in a box, it preserves both of them well. But we shouldn't have to be playing these gambles and playing these ploys so that we can get a quality product in our hand. That really falls onto Walmart, and even more so falls onto Hasbro, who's distributing these, and whose name falls under some dirt when they get to us in bad condition. So it's not just Walmart, Hasbro really has to check their affiliates and make sure that some of their partners, some of their exclusives are available on their partner's website. Now this was launched last year. We've seen every other exclusive between any other store get on there, but Star Wars has yet to get any kind of visibility. As you've seen in this review, just by gently posing this Tuscan, his right hand got lightsabered right off. And, I, you know, I, I am a craftsman. I will be able to fix this. I'll leave some tips on how to repair your vintage collection figures. But we shouldn't have to be doing this. We shouldn't have to be doubling as repairmen as well as collectors. It's not fair to us, especially with the price hikes. Come on, guys. A great pro for this figure has to be the fact that it's an original figure. I think from the original 96, but definitely from the original trilogy. These characters really do add to the lived-in universe that makes Star Wars so great and it's really fantastic to add one of them to our collection. That's a wrap on this episode of Binary Sunset Review. As always, I've been Mike. Your likes and your views are greatly appreciated. I hope you're enjoying the fall season out there and enjoyed this review of the Vintage Collection Walmart exclusive Tuscan Raider. Join us next time. We're gonna be jumping right into Endor Luke Skywalker. Have a great day out there. Stay safe, stay sane, and remember, the Force will be with you. Always. I'm just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe.